here we have two colors as you can see okay this color and this color okay so this is two parts as you can see so this color basically is for the ground and this here this is isolation so this connected to the ground this also the ground these holes also are connected to the ground and also this is connected to the ground here as you can see we have a very thin lines or buses this is basically for control signals or enable signals so these lines as you can see can hold a very small voltage like one volt for example or 0.9 volts for the clock or enable but for this it can hold 3.3 volt or even 5 volts hi in this video you're going to learn how to track signals and voltages without any schematic or data sheet so i'm going to show you step by step how to track and follow signals in order to troubleshoot the failure in any motherboard so let's get started so we're gonna see basically four motherboards in order to go deeper into understanding how to track and follow signals so let's begin with the first motherboard so as you can see here we have many lines with different sizes okay many lines with different sizes so when you find a, a bolded line means the current is high is increased and when you find a very thin line means there is just a small current and small voltage of course pass through it so for example here we have some lines these lines basically are bolded it can hold 5 volts 3 volts 7 volts etc so as you can see these points here in the right are connected to the point in the left as you can see because we have the bus connect these two points so to be sure we can use just the multimeter we can choose just to continue with the option as you can see or the buzzer option so always to test the continuity you should choose the buzzer option or the continuity option so let's check right now the resistance of this line normally we should if we use the multimeter between these two points we should get a low resistance as you can see in the multimeter we get about zero on the multimeter means these two points are connected together so let's check the second points as you can see also we get a low resistance so these two lines are serviceable no cutted line here okay so this is very easy but we go in to see more advanced things just continue with me so for example for this point as you can see here we can find the other point as you can see just we can follow the path as you can see and this is it so this point here and this here should be connected together because we follow the path we should get a low resistance in the multimeter so let's check as you can see we have a low resistance in the multimeter means these two parts are connected together why because just we follow the path the line here okay so if we have 5 volt in this point we should get 5 volt also in this point so here as you can see we have other points that is connected to this integrated circuit so here i will show you a tips a trick that you can use in order to avoid damaging the circuit here we have an ic if we want for example to check between the step to test this ic in these two pins okay if we go directly to ic pins we can make a short circuit so we should use the extensions this pin here as you can see is here connected to this point and the second pin is connected to this point here 
So I can just check between this point without going directly to the IC. You can make a short circuit and then damage the IC. Okay, that's why you should always use extensions as you can see. Just follow the paths. For example, here we have more space here, but if we test directly into IC, we can do a short circuit. So, do you see here lines? As you can see, these lines always there is a difference in terms of size or thickness. So this line, for example, is a bolded line. It can hold even 19 volt. And here, as you can see, this large path here is for the ground. When you find a very large path, means for the ground. So let's see this board also. I'm going to show you four boards, mini boards, in order to go deeper into understanding how to track voltages. So basically, this is a switch mode power supply motherboard. As you can see here, for example, this is the ground. Okay, this is the ground here. So you can determine the kind or the type of the bus. Is it the ground? Is it for data? Is it for power? Just using your intelligence. If the bus is very bold, means the bus is the ground. So let's check another motherboard here, as you can see. Basically, this motherboard we have this is basically the processor here. Do you see the buses here? The buses are thin. All these buses basically are for data and control signals. Here we have a very bolded, as you can see, bus. This can hold even 30 volts or 20 volts. Okay, in accordance with the type of the board, as you can see. This bus goes to capacitors. This is filtering capacitors and also goes to diode here. Do you see? So this is this bus is for power. And those here are for control signals. And here as you can see, this is ground. Automatically this is ground. Okay? The large path is always for ground. Okay? So this is for ground. So here, as I told you before, you if you try to test or to check the IC here directly in its spin out, you can damage it. You should use extensions, as you can see. Always use extensions. Okay? Instead of taking measurement directly in the IC pin out, pins, you should use extension. So here basically we have these holes here. These holes here means this board is not is a um, a multi boards there are multi there are multi boards integrated with each, uh, each other this is basically a multi boards here okay as you can see it can be three four five boards or more that's why you find these holes always when you find this like these holes means this is a multi boards as you can see we have also ho holes here so let's see right now another motherboard Always the same working principle, here the large path is for the ground. So here, for example, this is a bolded line here. This line can hold a very high power, okay? So basically, this is a switch mode power supply. Here we have even 115 volts. This can hold 115 volts. So here, as you can see, this is basic, basically a laptop motherboard. Of course, for the laptop motherboard, the voltages are very small. Okay, we have just the the high voltage can be 19 volts or 20 volts. That's why you will find usually a thin buses as you can see here we have a thin buses the buses that can hold one volt two volt three volts okay because the high power basically in the laptop motherboard can be 20 volts or 19 volts okay as you can see here basically this is for data and control signals and here as you can see we have this bolted lines those can be for 19 volts okay can be for 19 volts as you can see those can be for 19 volts, 12 volts, and those for the control signals, it can be 3.3 volts. Okay? And of course, here we have the ground. This is the ground. The large 
path is for the ground. Here, as you can see, we have a bolded line here in the laptop motherboard. This is basically 19 volts. This is for 19 volts, as you can see. So if we follow this path, as you can see, it should be goes directly, as you can see, to the charge IC. This is basically the charge IC here. Means 19 volts because 19 volt begins with the charge IC. That's why we have a bolded line here. Okay, so the size of any bus or line in any motherboard means the voltage, means the amount of voltages. And basically here, as you can see, we have a very thin buses. This can be 0 0.9 volt, 0.5 volt. This is basically enable signals and control signals.